welcome to worship on this Easter morning. We just did a live service from the parsonage. The internet was not working at church. We've come back. It is working. So we're actually going to record this one more time. And we'll include the music this time around. So thank you to Ian especially for having yet another go with this. As we begin this Easter 2020, it is a very different Easter. There's a hymn writer, Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. And we have sung her hymns here on occasion. She writes new words to familiar tunes. So they've been easy ones to incorporate there for. She's written one to the tune of the Church's One Foundation, especially for this Easter. And I'd like to share those words with you as we begin. This Easter celebration is not like ones we've known. We pray in isolation. We sing the hymns alone. We're distant from our neighbors, from worship leaders too. No flowers grace the chancel, to set a festive mood. No gathered choirs are singing, no banners lead the way. O God of love and promise, where is joy this Easter day? With sanctuaries empty, may homes become the place. We ponder resurrection and celebrate your grace. Our joys won't come from worship that's in a crowded room, but from the news of women who saw the empty tomb. Our joy comes from disciples who ran with haste to see, who heard that Christ is risen and then by grace believed. In all the grief and suffering, may we remember well, Christ suffered crucifixion and faced the powers of hell. Each Easter bears the promise, Christ rose that glorious day. Now nothing in creation can keep your love away. We thank you that on Easter your church is blessed to be a scattered faithful body that's doing ministry. In homes and in the places of help and healing too, we live the Easter message by gladly serving you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In your homes where you are, I now invite you to sing along. Let us pray. Holy Lord Jesus, on this day we rejoice in your glory and stand in awe of how you have transformed this world with your dying and your rising. Receive our joyful praise. Alleluia. Amen. Well, good to have you with us. Children. This is a bit of your time, but adults, you are children of the kingdom too. Ian, I'm going to invite you to yep, take the iPad off. 
don't know if you're going to see his fingers or not, but he does this from his hand, and bring it over. How'd you go with following the words on the hymn, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got a book here. Jesus has risen, and we're just going to look at the first few pages of it. I got this in the mail the other day, and it's one of those books I really liked because you know what? It's a pop-up book, and I always think those are fun. I don't remember having any of these when I was a child. Maybe I did. Have to check with my mother to confirm that. But there we go. Look at that. It's been three days since Jesus died on a cross, and his friends were sad. They missed him. That morning, women brought spices to the place where Jesus was buried, but the, spoke, the stone in front of the tomb was rolled away. So the women coming with their spices. Can you see the little dog up there? We've got the cross reminding us what happened just a couple days ago, that Jesus died. He was on the middle cross, and there was a criminal on either side of him. Check the next page. Inside, a man dressed in dazzling white clothes greeted them. Where was Jesus? Do not be afraid, the angel said. You're looking for Jesus, but he is risen and is no longer here. The angel pointed to the place where Jesus had been laid. Look for yourselves, the angel said. Now go and tell the other disciples. Kind of neat. You can see that we're kind of in a cave. Look at the, the snails, probably fish, those fossils that get embedded, some kind of crystals even. Kind of a neat cave where he'd been laid. I want to do just one more page today. The women were amazed by what the angel had told them. They ran as fast as they could to find the disciples. Suddenly, a man appeared. It was Jesus. Greetings, my friend, he said. Teacher, the women were amazed. Jesus was alive, standing in front of them. Now, as we hear our gospel reading this morning, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell their own stories about what happened that first Easter, and we won't be hearing about how the women saw Jesus, but the promise is there in the reading that he is going ahead of you, and you will see him as he told you. So kind of hang on to that promise. So we'll do some more pages out of this pop-up one as the Easter season goes on. But thanks for bringing that over, Ian. Sorry about the movement. Yep, we'll let him get back to where he needs to be there. And then I want to just spend a moment and go through, some of you have done some wonderful coloring. Children, all ages, we are all children of our Heavenly Father. Sisters and brothers of Jesus who has been raised. So Jesus, so Ian, back to the computer. We're going to have a look at some of these. So let's see some of your work this last week getting ready for Easter Day. We've got Aaliyah and Bailey here, all in their Easter dresses. We've got Griff here. He looks pretty comfortable there, doesn't he? He's Alleluia Butterfly. We've got just the hand here. The hand belongs to Cindy, and you're going to see her just a little bit later on here. The beautiful coloring of Alleluia. Some of our high school students, we've got Brooke, who's in confirmation. We've got Quinn, who's already been confirmed. Check out their alleluias and the butterfly. Just need a short time on this one. We already had this on Facebook, encouraging you. That is now up in our front, front window of the parsonage. Leah and Alex are here. Look at those beautiful, strong colors. Children of the kingdom, right, Tina and Ernie? The alleluias. And Selena, E.T., and Colton with their colorings. They've been doing this together as a family. Wonderful thing to hear. That is in the Jenkins front window. Darren, Darren picked up some of the coloring sheets for me the other evening, and Darren said, I love coloring. Didn't he do a great job there? And Kaylee's working on hers on the picture on the right, but the finished product is there on the left. Again, just beautiful. We've got Jack. He also did one. And then we've got Katie. Check out her colors, too. All looking lovely. Okay. 
This one, if you look on the very bottom, you'll see Emily did that one. She put her name on it. Then she's got one more, and the colors are a little stronger on this next one. It's like rainbows everywhere. Beautiful. Ella's been doing chalk things in the driveway. I've seen some of those posted. But here's her Alleluia. Now we've got Cindy with her Alleluia butterfly. We've got Zach and Kara. And Pam gave a hand with this, so thank you, Pam. Beautiful. And we've got Willie, my neighbor here. And this one doesn't quite fit, does it? Can you read what it says there? It says, Happy Birthday, Daddy. So we've got Paisley and Aubrey. And Adam, we want to wish you a happy birthday today. As we celebrate the gift of life, you celebrate, I won't say how many years, but you celebrate a special day today. So indeed, happy birthday, Adam, as you celebrate the gift of life, family, and friends. Here, Ian, and then we're back to our women. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for butterflies soon to emerge. We thank you for the shouts of Alleluia around Raymond this morning as the church bells rang and the trumpets played. Lord, be with your children of all ages who Adam as he celebrates a birthday and with every one of us as we celebrate the new life that is ours through baptism. Bless your children, Lord, of every age. Amen. Okay. The gospel for today. Probably of the four if I had to choose one for today that wasn't already what we've been following, this would have been my choice because it just seems so appropriate. And we've been hearing from the Gospel of Mark ever since Christmas. And we finally reached the last chapter today, chapter 16, and we read verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be afraid. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Grace and peace to you this Easter morning, who also are afraid. Amen. What are some of your memories of past Easter's? When I grew up, Easter was when I usually got a new dress. And just to qualify what new meant, it was a dress either my mother had sewed, or starting probably about sixth grade for me, it was a dress that I was able to make for myself. Or it might have been a three-year-old hand-me-down for my only girl cousin on one side of the family, who was three years older than me and from whom many of the hand-me-downs were store-bought. And I could hardly wait for them. Because of our age difference, it was usually about three years from when the bag or box of clothing was given to me before the clothes did fit. They were hand-me-downs, but you know, they were still new to me. Easter also meant breakfast at church after the sunrise service and before the eight o'clock service. I can remember scrambled eggs, bacon, and orange juice. And Easter, I started playing organ for church in fifth grade. Easter then meant that those strong, 
almost enough to knock you over perfume of the Easter lilies and other flowers in the front of the sanctuary. And the organ was in the left front corner of that church as you faced the altar. So I had to go through that garden of flowers with the heavy perfume to get to the organ. Easter. It meant the junior choir sang at the sunrise as well as the other two services, and so did the senior choir. And there were trumpets. I think I can remember three of them. Our high school band director, for sure. My brother, and I think his best friend as well. Easter and music went hand in hand. And Easter, it meant a full church when I grew up. Extra rows of folding chairs were squeezed in to seat the families and extended families and those who made a once a year visit to church because Easter meant you went to church. Whatever your memories of past Easter's are, this Easter likely bears little resemblance to them. There are no blaring trumpets. There's no resounding organ, no Easter lilies or flowers of any kind. There was no hurry this morning to get to church just a little early, to sit not just in your usual pew, but to be able to sit near or beside extended family. The pews are empty. There was also no need to do any house cleaning either and get those cobwebs from the corners or dust off the folding tables and chairs at home for extra family members coming to eat today because no one should be traveling. We shouldn't be gathering with anyone except those we live with. This Easter is definitely different. And it's probably just a little bit closer to what that first Easter was like. That first Easter was quiet, eerily quiet. It was just when the sun had risen that the three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, headed to the tomb. They headed to the tomb with a mission, a purpose. They bought and then they carried the spices they had bought to anoint Jesus' dead body. There probably wasn't a lot of talking or chatting as they went. They would not have wanted to draw any attention to themselves. After the terrible tragedy of what had happened to their teacher and friend, Jesus, they didn't really feel safe. Those who had been part of Jesus' inner circle, his disciples, they'd run for their lives when the crowd had appeared just a few nights ago with torches, swords, and clubs, and the women had not seen them since. These three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, from a distance they had watched as the Roman soldiers hammered nails through Jesus' hands and feet. They had watched as the cross was lifted. They had watched as... It was raised up with Jesus nailed to it and then dropped into the hole with a jolt to stand it upright. And the pain that Jesus felt with each jar and movement must have been agonizing. They saw all that. These women watched as the soldiers rolled dice and they divided Jesus' garments. These women watched as Jesus refused to drink. They heard him cry out and then they saw his body go limp and they knew. They knew what death looked like. They knew. No one had to tell them. It was over. He was dead. And the crowd who had gathered to watch the spectacle of three men being crucified, the crowd left, went back to their homes, to their workplaces. Some were shaking their heads. Some were laughing and talking. And the women remained after the crowd had gone. They were still there at a distance when Joseph of Arimathea walked past them carrying a linen cloth. They watched Joseph as he took down the body and gently wrapped it in the linen. The women then followed Joseph as he cradled Jesus' body in his arms. They followed him to a tomb hewn out of rock. They saw Joseph enter it, still gently carrying Jesus' body, and then he came out, empty-handed. And with a push and a shove, he rolled a large stone across the opening. Because by then it was late in the day, the Sabbath had begun. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, they went to their own homes. But not before agreeing to meet, as soon as the Sabbath was over, at sunrise, to buy and bring the spices and anoint the body. 
And now, now that the sun was rising in the eastern sky, the women met as they'd arranged. They had their baskets of spices, and the three headed to the tomb. Who will roll away the stone from the entrance? They quietly wondered aloud as they walked with purpose. And then they saw it. But it no longer covered the entrance. It had been rolled to one side. It was a large stone. Certainly it was heavy. So who, why, how, when? So many questions tumbled over one another in their heads. The three approached. They entered the tomb. There was no body wrapped in linen. Where was he? Where was Jesus? And to the right side of where the body should have been, there was a young man dressed in white. He told them, do not be afraid. He had that right. They were afraid. Their minds were swarming with questions. There was no body wrapped in linen cloth. The stone was no longer covering the entrance. The young man in white, who was he? Where did he come from? Did he move the stone? Did he take the body? And where was it now? Fear, confusion, terror. And the young man tells the women, do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And his message, that Jesus is risen. What in the world was he talking about? Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, Salome hastily went out of the tomb and they ran. Ran as fast as their legs would carry them because Mark tells us, Terror and amazement has seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. That first Easter, there was a lot of confusion and fear and terror. The young men in white told the women not to be afraid, but they still were. In the midst of it all, they were afraid. Yet Jesus was risen. And how's this Easter for you? I'm guessing it's like no Easter you've had before. Maybe confusion and fear mark this day for you too. Maybe you are afraid. We remain under a stay-at-home order here until early May. Many businesses are closed. Many are unemployed. 60% of Americans would not have had $1,000 in emergency savings to tide them over before this started. And what most had is likely now gone even with being prudent and scrimping. We don't know yet whether schools will reopen for the remainder of the school year. We do know that Wilmer Fest has canceled its summer program. Beaches and pools will not be opening this summer in Minnesota. No word yet on Bible camp, but we have children and young adults registered. But I think I heard the young Bible camps in South Dakota have already decided that they will not open this summer even though not opening is going to be devastating financially for the camps, as it will be here too, if that is the decision. Some of you listening have not worked for a number of weeks now, and this is our fifth Sunday of doing online worship. Food and supplies in the shops are somewhat unreliable. Face masks are encouraged to be worn when you go out, but you should only be out if you need to be for essentials. And dare you think about a summer vacation? Or getting together with family and friends on July 4th? Will we ever be able to shake hands again? Or hug not just our friends, but even family who doesn't live with us? Like Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, we too have heads full and spinning with questions. The present and the future are question marks. There is so much we do not know. This virus is not just the flu. It can be more deadly than the flu, even for young people with no pre-existing conditions. This is a scary time, and there's plenty of confusion, a lot of questions. We all struggle with sorting out fact from fake news and wondering what is true from those who are not wanting to scare us. Who can we believe? Who should we believe? Who do we believe? We, too, are afraid. 
like Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, our lives too have been dealt a blow. Our world as we knew it ended. And yet, Jesus is risen. Our fears are not the last word. Jesus is risen. The tomb is empty, and the promise is spoken this day to you and to me. He is going ahead of you. You will see him. The empty tomb and this promise, this is what Easter is really about. It never was about having a new dress. And the lilies and the other flowers and the choirs and the trumpets and the organ and the pews filled with family, relatives, and friends and a meal together. Easter was always about the empty tomb and the promise that Jesus is going ahead of us. And in the midst of all the confusion and fear and grief of what was and no longer is, in the midst of uncertainty that would easily swallow us like quicksand, hear the promise. Jesus is going ahead of you. And even though you may be living with many questions, a lot of uncertainty, Jesus is going ahead of you. No one of us has any idea how today, much less the coming days or weeks or even months are going to unfold. But this we know and to this we can cling. The tomb is empty and the promise is sure. The tomb and the promise, these cannot be taken away from us. This is an Easter to remember, not because the church is empty, but because the tomb is empty. And he is going before you and me. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And this is most certainly true. Let us pray. Most gracious God, you showed your loving power by raising Jesus from death to life. As we respond to your love with glad and generous hearts, may our gifts of thankfulness and love to you through the church bring life and hope to many in the world you so love. 
Amen. Let us join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning you gave the church the gift of your witnesses. Give us courage to overcome our fear and hesitation to tell the world that our Lord is risen and is going before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl, all in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in song with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace as together we face a common disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We weep with those who weep and we mourn with those who mourn. Cradle in your loving arms your children of every age with various conditions including those suffering from the coronavirus. Assure the fearful, the suffering, and the dying of your loving presence if you keep your promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us this day who cannot gather together in our places of worship or be with family and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and you defeated the powers of evil. We remember this day those who have died, especially Duane Shore. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you also in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our risen Lord is with us and goes before us. May he remember us in his kingdom and hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The tomb is empty. The promise is true. Trust it. And may the loving power of God, which raised Jesus from the dead, strengthen you in hope, enfold you in love, and fill you with joy in believing. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. And now I'm going to let Caden and Paige have the last word for this morning. You're going to want to move that a hair closer to the mic there, Ian, or you're okay? <laughs> <laughs>